All right, so something down and dirty here today. Uh, we're gonna show you how to fix broken or missing or damaged pads. So I've got this parts U5000 here. This has been picked clean. It's just a completely, you know, a complete true parts chassis. So we're gonna show you here today how to fix these pads. And I've already pre-damaged these things, uh, heat the pad up and then I broke it off. So you've got a situation where you're doing a cap kit or changing a flyback or whatever, where the pad is lifted off and it's gone, broken, damaged, missing. Like right here on the flyback, I have purposely damaged these two or, or broken and removed these two pads. You see this one here just goes this way by itself, but this one has two sides to it. So we're gonna repair these. But let's say that you're doing a flyback or a cap kit or whatever the situation may be, and you have lifted a trace or a pad and the pad is gone, missing, like this situation here. How do you fix this? Well, most people would just, you know, attach a wire to the pin and run it over here to the, the next pad, which you can do that, but you don't need to do that. if you. If you choose to, you can, but my personal method is I get these uh, sanding pins like this. It's called a spot sanding pin. This is used in the automotive industry to like spot sand paint off of a car. And I use these because they're easier to use and they're more efficient than those cheap uh, quote unquote fiberglass pins you get on Amazon. Well, this is on Amazon too, but I'll put a link for this down below so you can grab one for yourself. But I prefer to use this as an actual spot sanding pin with actual fiberglass in it. And some of those ones you get on Amazon for eight bucks or whatever are uh, not actual fiberglass. So how do you fix this? Well, it's quite simple. You can use your sanding pin here to sand away the uh, the trays here, or actually the solder mask on the trays, and just solder your component to the, the exposed part of the trace. So we'll start with this one here that only goes this way. So if we just sand a little bit of this solder mask away, you don't want any green left over. So there you have it. Now this is actual fiberglass, so get yourself a you know a bristle brush or something and uh, brush it off into your trash can or refuse receptacle of your choice. And then what you can do, just pretend, you know, like, okay, I wouldn't say pretend, but on the flyback, it's gonna be hard to bend, bend your pin over. But for demonstration purposes, let's just use a component leg here. Uh, let's grab, oh, these aren't long enough, I should have prepared, I didn't, that's why it's the amateur channel. Let's grab, oh, yeah, these will work, let's grab one of these, all right. So let's say that this is a regular capacitor uh, spot, so we'll put this through the hole here. And all you have to really do is just bend your leg over like so. If that'll stay there, eh, that'll stay there, okay. Just bend your leg over like that. Then you can take your solder and there you go. That's all you have to do. You don't have to create a long jumper all the way over here. That's all you have to do. Now, of course, like I say, it's going to be more difficult for you to actually bend the flyback leg. You, you're not going to be able to bend the flyback leg like that. You're going to, you can, you know, bend it over where it's angled. Um, but then you can just kind of create one big bridge. You can create a bridge from the leg over to there. Uh, you're only, you're only, you know, jumping. You're only jumping this tiny gap between the edge of the hole and, and the trace, which you can put a big solder blob across there to bridge it over to the exposed trace. And you can, you know, go like this, use gravity as your friend, but that, that's a separate circumstance. But that's generally the idea of what I'm talking about, trying to illustrate here. Um, just so, uh, sand the, the mask away and bend your leg over and that's all you have to do. And that's a very nice and secure joint. You don't have to really worry about that ever. Um, this is my preferred method of how to do this. Now, 
now you, let's say you have a situation where there's a a trace on either side so you want to be able to make sure that the the component leg goes this way and it has to go this way in that case we'll do the same thing here you want to make sure be careful you don't want to go back and forth uh, because you can lift the actual trace off the board so kind of just scrape across uh, like like scrape 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 kind of thing don't sit here and go back and forth like that so that's what i'm doing here so there we go we've exposed both sides of the trace there and what we do now is we'll go ahead and tin up these real quick and if you do it properly, the solder will flow nice and easy right on there without you having to hold it on there and all that. So that is what we were left with here. All right, so how do we fix the other side here? Well, what we can do is we'll put this other, actually, you know what, let me clip this off because we're not gonna need that, okay. So uh, we will put our other component leg through this hole here. Uh, it's this one. All right, so what I recommend doing is bending this one way and then folding it back over on itself. Which is easier said than done here and then kind of massage it over into the direction of the other something like that then we can hold this in place like this there stay there okay now that that's in place we can fold that down hit that why aren't you there we go okay there's that one then we'll come back and hit this one again and there you go i mean it's not you're not out to win any awards but this will look much better than having a bunch of wires strung all over the place then we'll get our isopropyl alcohol on the brush here Clean it up a bit. And there you have it. That is my preferred method of how to really do this. And like I say, if you want to run wires, run wires. If you don't think you have the ability to do something like this, go ahead, run your wire, do whatever you want. You know, I, it might, me personally, I think that it just looks better than running a wire here and running a wire there and you have to glue the wires down. It just doesn't look very good. Now, I mean, this isn't going to win any awards either, but I think that looks better than having all those random wires running all over the place. So, yeah, you just put your wire through, bend it over to the, the closest one, and then fold the rest of the leg over to the other side. Because now we're going to have continuity from here through this over to here. If you don't fix both sides, you just want to be, you want to be able, you want to be aware and cognizant of the fact that it doesn't just go to one place. It's going to go over here as well. So make sure you inspect it properly because you're going to end up with problems if you do this repair and only go this way or, or only go this way and didn't notice it goes this way as well. You want to pay attention to where all this stuff goes when you're doing repairs like this. So, um, yeah, of course, take this with a grain of salt because there's different scenarios and situations for different places. But let's say, you know, like you're changing this 1000 microfarad cap right here. Uh, that is these two points. Yeah, these two points here. So let's say that pad there was completely gone. Again, you just scrape the trace away, move your, bend the leg over, solder it to, now I do want to recommend cutting it first. So, you know, if you only have to go over, you know, an eighth of an inch there to, tr to solder the exposed trace, it's going to be difficult for you to cut the leg off if it's flush with, the, if it's laying flat against the board. And then when you try to cut it, you can actually pop it off again. So I'd recommend uh, bending the leg over to length and then bending it up a bit again, cut it and then fold it back over while it's already cut and then solder it back on. Um, but anyway, that's so the same situation that we did here, you want to apply it to something like that. Just scrape it away, fold the leg over, cut it, 
uh, and then solder it down to the exposed trace and it'll end up looking something you know just like that so that's about it something down and dirty quick and easy so uh, next on the channel I'm going to be working on a tutorial on how to rebuild neck boards so I've got a 7500 here that's missing a flyback and uh, it looks like someone has changed <laughs> they've changed the caps on this side of the board but didn't change any of these caps over here so uh, I don't know if this is working it does look to be complete but minus a flyback there's no remote board or harness I've got some of those extra but next on the channel is gonna be a uh, I have to get this fixed which will make a video on this but before we do that, I want to do a dedicated video on how to rework and rebuild uh, these neck boards on these 7400s, 7500s, 2000s, 5000s. Because um, I've done a lot of these videos where I do the rebuild on these in the video where I'm working on the actual chassis. But I want to make a, a standalone video on how to uh, take the neck uh, transistors off, clean up the pads, what to look for, how to reflow, how to fix the traces, all that stuff. And I don't know why someone put the resistors on the back side, but uh, to probably try to keep them less hot. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so there'll be another video here coming soon on how to rebuild all this stuff just dedicated by itself for these. And then we'll try and fix the chassis. But anyway, so just want to put this out there to try and help people out who, uh, you know, just run the wires, which if that's all you want to do again, that's fine. But I prefer to do, you know, this kind of thing. So that's about it. Thanks for very much for watching. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you uh, leave a comment down below if it helps you out. Otherwise, stay tuned for uh, that neckboard repair, and we'll see you then.